JavaScript always has plenty to offer to us. There are already a lot of stuff there in JavaScript to learn and every year there are more, more and more are getting added. Think about it. There are seven types of operators itself. You have comparison operator, bitwise operator, arithmetic operators and etc. And each of this type, there are plenty of operators to use. Now today in this video, we are going to talk about three operators, which actually the modern inclusions and people started using it a lot. But we want to look into do we really need those operators in practice? If yes, then what are the circumstances? If no, then when to avoid them? So let's get started with the short video where we are going to talk about three operators from JavaScript and their do's and don'ts around it. I hope you like it. In case you like it, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe because once you do so, I get motivation to teach you better. Let's get started with the first one. Okay, folks, so let us first talk about the double knot or double negation operators. It looks like this, two knots. And you already know about one knot, that's a unary operator, right? Which inverts the truthiness or the falseness of a value. So it means that if you give one knot and then true, it becomes false. If you give one knot of false, it becomes true. If you give one knot of zero, zero itself is a false value, so it will become true. If you give one knot of one, one is a truthy value, so it becomes false. It just does the inversion. Then what does double not does? So if you do double not of true, it becomes true. How does it becomes true? It's exactly same as not of not of true. So it means the first not of true, if you consider it becomes false, we have seen it before, and then not of false will be true, right? So this first one will evaluate to something like not of false, and that becomes true. That's how it is. But why do you need this double double thing? It's because this is in turn always will return a boolean for you. So this is to check in the boolean landscape that a particular thing is true or false. That's it. So if you're aware of boolean, this exact thing is a JavaScript alternative of boolean. This is the one where you can pass anything, for example, one to check whether a value is a Boolean or not. So not not exactly does this for you. The result of double not is always and explicitly either a true or a false. So that's the benefit, same as the Boolean, right? The double not operator is probably a quickest and the easiest syntactical way of converting any value to its Boolean equivalent. So if I do not not string tapas, what is it going to be? It's going to be true because tapas is a string not of tapas is what false so not of false is going to be true so when do you use it basically as javascript is a loosely typed language right we have a lot of ways of getting a false value for example null undefined zero none everything is a false value so when you are making an api call and a value you are getting you really don't know like what is there in the store sometime right sometimes it might return undefined sometimes it might return null sometimes it's zero sometimes it's nn now if you want to explicitly check the value of those returns instead of that if you're just interested on whether the value is there versus value is not there i think that's the time you will be using it so for example if you do not not null it's going to give you a false because not of null is true correct so anything that coming from your api services or as a response if it is coming as a null and on top of that if you're just giving not not you are getting the fa false as a value so you can check it in your if expression if the value is true or false using not not now would you use it i have seen the usage of these things in circumstances like this for example if you have an object like this error i have seen people doing it like not not error to identify whether they are actually getting an error object or not so if they are satisfied with not not error the next thing they do is not not error dot message that also will be satisfied and become true but for example you are searching for something like stack trace which is not there in this error object at all you are going to get the false as a value right so this not not is a shorthand for you to convert any value to its equivalent true or false boolean value and then use that as an expression into your if else all these conditions to take call about it now would you use it i would use it in most of the cases because it's less number of code that i would be writing and if i am only working on javascript if i'm working on typescript my types are already safe so i don't need to probably use this but even in javascript you have an equivalent thing called boolean which we just now spoke and if you want readability in your code in that case i would suggest that you go for boolean explicitly 
for example the same thing we can write boolean of error is going to give me true boolean of error that message is going to give me true so the output is exactly same so based on if you want readability go for boolean if you don't and if you're working on javascript go for not not double not i hope you understand the concept let's go to the second one dude i have tough time pronouncing this one it's called nullish coalescing operator coalescing operator okay so what does it do and how does it look like it's basically two interrogative question marks and what does it do the objective of the operator is in the name itself it's called nullish nullish means the knowledge value in javascript is basically null and undefined coalescing means is basically finding out in the context of null and undefined which one to choose so the coalescing is about think and tell what will be the final outcome whenever you have a null or undefined basically the knowledge value so how does it work so it takes two operands null may be the first operand and the second operand may be a string so in this case what happened so if the first operand is a null or undefined a knowledge value in that case it will return the second operand if the first operand is a not a knowledge value for example not null or not undefined then it will return the first value so the example that you see on screen it is going to return tapas because the first value is null and the second is a string a not null so if the first operand is a nullish value null or undefined it will return the second operand that is how it is now at this point of time don't you think that this is almost like or operator so like null or tapas is going to give me the same output just like the other one then what is the difference okay so difference is again about the nullish in case of or operator the landscape is quite wide it doesn't only check about the nullish it's also check about the truthy and falsy values so if you do false or tapas what is it going to return is going to return tapas undoubtedly because the first value is false that means our operator will look into the second operand and the second operand it is what is going to return if i had done true or tapas like this it will return a true not a false because the first operand it found a true it won't even proceed further it will do a short circuit what we call and it will return a true but the same thing if i just replace with the nullish coalescing operator like this is going to return me a false in this case it returned me tapas because the first one is false it has to evaluate again and then it's running tapas but in this case it is returning me false why because as for the definition if the first operand is a nullish value null or undefined it will return the second operand but in this case the first operand is not a nullish value false is not a nullish value false is a false value a knowledge value is null and undefined so as false is not a knowledge value it is going to return false so even in case of true the fact will be same because true is a truthy value is not a knowledge value so it will return true so i hope you understand that now the point is would you really use it i would use knowledge coalescing operator in a particular case a lot when i need some kind of fallback value what does it mean let's take an example and understand that let me take something called response and in response i will assign an object a simple object called say message and let's give some message say hello right now let's say this response is coming back after making an api call so if the response is there and along with the response i am having this nullish coalescing operator and i can say if response is nullish means response is null or undefined only in this case till no response available so it returns me the response here because as per the rule if this is having a nullish value null or undefined is going to give me the second operand if this is not a nullish value it is going to re return this response itself so response is what this particular message now if i make this response as undefined or null and then again execute this do you see what happened no response available because in this case this is a knowledge value and it will return the second operand so whenever you have situation like that instead of write if ternary uh, operator and then if else on all these things you can just use simply nullish coalescing operator to short your code and be smart so this is the second one let's move to the third one all right folks now the last one the last one i'm going to talk about which is called optional chaining 
and the operator looks like an interrogative and a dot. Why exactly optional chaining exists? It's basically to perform the access checks for nested object properties. What does it mean? It means when you go deep down in an object and try to seek a value of a particular property, how do you do? You do by say object dot property dot nested property dot nested nested property that's how you go now in between in this chain of getting the value if certain things are nullish or certain things are undefined you are going to get bad error let's understand with an example so i have taken a big gigantic object so here are what it is it is a country inside country you have a name and inside name you have a native name inside native name you have english hindi tamil and in English, how India is called, in Hindi, how India is called, in Tamil, how India is called. That's how it is. Let's say I start accessing the properties deep down. So I'll do country dot name. So far, I have everything. Then I'll do native name. Then I'll do Hindi, means H-I-N. Then I do official. So if I do this, it's going to return me what is it called in Hindi. It's called Bharat Ganraj. Okay. Now I may wonder if this is coming from my backend. I know there is there are language support for how to call India in different languages. I may want to retrieve what is it called in Bengali, say Bangla. And if I do enter, that's it. I get a type error. Cannot read properties of undefined because BN Bangla is not available in this object at all. Now this error, if I want to know that if there is an undefined, I want to be alerted about this particular error and this particular incident, I think this is perfectly fine. But if I want to handle this undefined gracefully, it means that I don't want to catch this type error. I don't want to do anything with this error, but rather I want this to be executed and return me just an undefined in case the Bangla support is not there. The Bangla language support is not there. In that case, I'll go ahead and change this entire line with something called an optional chaining. So I'm giving this question mark before the dots. Now, if I do, it is going to give me undefined. Why? Because when we use this optional chaining, this syntax, it always check in the left side value or the left side of it, that whether the value is undefined or null. If it is undefined or null, it's a knowledge value, it is just going to stop there. So for example, if country was null, it would have written undefined from here itself. If country name is null or undefined, it would have written from here. Similarly, it is actually returning from here because the ban is undefined, right? So this is how the things works for optional chaining. Take this as an example. Now, instead of native name, I have just given native lang. I know inside name, there is nothing called native lang at all. There is a native name, but there is nothing called native lang. But I have done native lang and so far before native lang, I have not given this optional chaining because I was quite sure that this country will have a name for sure. So for that, I just put it as country dot name, right? I know that there is no chance of it is going to kind of fail through type error. And if it fails, I want to know that it is failing through type error undefined. Now, if I move along to native lang, I know that native lang may be or may not be there. So in that case, I'll be putting an optional chaining after that so that in case native lang is becoming undefined, I will gracefully handle it. I won't proceed further. I won't look for ENG. I won't look for official at all. So if I execute this, this is going to give me undefined. But if I just remove this optional chaining from here and go with the regular dot access survey, it is going to give me the error again saying that native lang is not available. So it depends like where you want to really keep it open or where you want to put it gracefully. So don't just blindly put optional chaining for every accessor. For the accessor where you quite sure that it is cannot be undefined, you don't have to put. For the accessor where you want to be notified through an error, if it is an undefined, don't put. But for accessors where you cannot take a chance and you want to gracefully handle it, then you kind of put this optional chaining. So that will be my recommendation for that. Now this optional chaining and the nullish coalition operator, both can be worked together very, very beautifully. How? Our previous example of this country name, native name, Bangla language official, this actually failed for us, right? It actually gave, with graceful handling, it gave me undefined. So I'll copy this guy. And now with this, can I do something like this? No Bangla language support is available what do you think about this so here country is there yeah is there name is there yeah is there native name is there yeah is there bangla language is there no it's not that is undefined so it means 
whenever this gets executed the left side of it is count kind of found undefined so it does a short circuit that means it is not going to proceed further it will return undefined then comes our nullish collision operator into play what this operator says the left side of the operator if it is nullish value means undefined and null return the second operand value second operand value is is what no bangla language support is available so if i execute this i will get this as a fallback so this is how you mix and match and you use things together and that's when it makes a lot of sense so now the question would you use them i would say why not whenever you have the circumstances that i have explained and you have those use cases to use them go ahead and use them but don't overuse them wherever you are not required so hey folks you enjoyed it if so why don't you like share and subscribe please go ahead and like and share this video and subscribe to this channel because it means a lot to me we'll be back again very soon with another informative video until then, take a great care of yourself and thank you for watching this.